Tonight on KBR News, we have your update on Haruka Weiser's case. Find out what safety measures <coughs> students want to see on campus. And researchers discuss the connections made in the religious and gender pay gap. You're watching KBR News, your leader for live local UT coverage. Broadcasting live from the Texas Student Television Studios at the University of Texas, you're watching KBR News at Knox. Austin's leader for live local UT coverage. Your news starts right now. Good evening and welcome back to KVR News for Monday, April 11th. I'm Chelsea Moreno. And I'm Sierra Juarez. Thanks for joining us. Tomorrow marks a week since 18-year-old Haruka Weiser's body was found on UT's campus. Weiser was known to be missing since April 3rd, only two days before officers found her body on Waller Creek. Weiser's accused killer, Mikhail Kreiner, was arrested on Thursday by officers who say that the surveillance video matched the timing of the incident. Before 17-year-old Kreiner was arrested, students and faculty of Ellison High School said two weeks ago that Kreiner disappeared. CPS failed to notify local police that Kreiner was missing and Kreiner's grandmother stated in an interview that CPS was, quote, supposed to have had him because they said he wasn't 18 yet. As of now, no dates have been set for pre-trial hearings for Kreiner since Weiser's death. Students on campus have united to honor her memory. Tonight, students gathered at the Winship Circle to give their condolences to Weiser. Yeah. UT President Benviz, student government leaders, and mentors of Haruka took the podium and spoke of her life. Black ribbons were passed out to mourning students as a symbol for her memory. Students were also encouraged to write letters to Wiser. This unfortunate event has led students to find different methods of walking safely at night. The student-run volunteer group SureWalk offers to help students, faculty, and staff to walk from their current location to their desired destination. CMHS and Sherwalk representatives attended the event in order to promote health and safety on campus. The past Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, we, my organization actually increased the amount of volunteers we had from eight to 10 in preparation for the amount of people. And for the past few semesters, we would usually have one or two people at night, but for the past few days, we've had constant people asking us to walk them home. Due to recent events, UT will be stepping up its security has increased their patrol and President Fenves expects to add security cameras and better lighting in dark areas. We went around campus asking students if they think these measures are enough to ensure safety. I still feel that campus safety is still up at a high because right after that, you know, event happened, uh, I've seen a lot of presence of, of I've seen a lot more presence of UTPD here. I think what they're doing is really good. Um, I'd like to see more, um, and even I know UT students get emails from UTPD, Just getting an email from them updating us on what measures they're going to be taking in the future would be nice. All I've seen is cops roaming around campus with the dogs and just kind of patrolling a little bit. Um, I think that's good. I don't know if it's sustainable. Um, so I think that one event, you know, one unfortunate event, shouldn't uh, cause a whole lot of panic. You know, it is very unfortunate that we lost a student here at UT, um, but it's not to say that, you know, somebody's going around doing something very harmful to all of our uh, UT community. Today marks the beginning of Mental Health Promotion Week. The event is hosted by UT's Counseling and Mental Health Center to promote positive emotional well-being. The week consists of a panel discussion and de-stressing activities all throughout campus. In light of the recent tragedy on campus, the center has also extended its hours to 7 p.m. until this Friday, April 15th. Any student who needs support can walk in for help. No appointment is necessary. Friends Chrislyn Gibson and Sydney Taylor went missing April 1st. The two were visiting Austin from Houston, went to a concert and a nightclub, and never made it back to their friend's house where they were staying. 
This past Saturday, family and friends held a vigil in Bear Creek Park, close to where Taylor's phone was mysteriously pinged this past Tuesday. Gibson's employer has put up a $5,000 reward for any information. Researchers may have found a link between the wage gap between men and women in the workforce and religion. We went out to know more on how religion can create gender roles that affect wages. Researchers Travis Wiseman and Nabomita Duda have released a working paper discussing the role that religion plays on the gender pay gap in America. Researchers have rarely looked into cultural factors such as religion behind the 23 cent average gap between male and female workers. Some people think that religion is something that is sort of separate from how people vote or how people, you know, kind of conduct other activities in their life. But it's clear that religion is something that is, is, you know, really interwoven in all of that. The researchers believe that the pay gap could be occurring because of gender norms created by different religions. Some denominations view women as to take like more traditional roles, but then others are a little bit more like um, contemporary. Academics do believe that religion could play a significant role in the gender pay gap in America. However, critics argue that more research is still necessary. Sierra Wattis, KBR News. Every year, UT's White Rose Society puts on 10,000 Roses, an event where they hand out 10,000 roses on campus to underline the importance of Holocaust and essential change on today's current human rights issues. Reporter Danny Matias went out to see the importance of Holocaust remembrance. Every year, UT's White Rose Society puts on 10,000 Roses, an event where they hand out 10,000 roses on campus to underline the importance of the Holocaust and essential change on today's current human rights issues. So our goal as an organization is to remember the Holocaust, but also to prevent future genocide. So every semester we pick a different cause, and this semester is the Syrian refugee crisis. After cutting and dethorning the roses, the volunteers then attached information to each rose that explained the significance of Holocaust remembrance and drew parallels between past European refugee treatment and today's treatment of Syrian refugees. UT's White Rose Society then distributed these roses on campus in hopes of educating students and preventing history from repeating itself. Students had the decision to send a postcard to Texas Senators, asking them to co-sponsor the Genocide and Atrocity Prevention Act. Information was also given on when and where Holocaust survivor Max Globin would be speaking. This is how hate and, you know, things begin and what it can lead to um, in the future. Crowds gathered to hear Globin speak. With his first-hand experiences, Globin felt strongly about the basic human rights of equality. Sometimes, one-on-one, -on -one, we are angels. Put us in a group, and we can become a lynch mob. Believing that taking action against global injustice begins with education and action locally. Danny Matias, KVR News. Find out the main reason of why food trucks are failing health inspections. And UT incorporates a virtual reality and 3D program for students. Stay tuned for more KVR News. You're watching KVR News at 9. Hold on there. Your campus, your news. Beaumont Independent School District is investigating a video of 63-year-old teacher Mary Hastings. The video shows Hastings hitting a student multiple times. Hastings, who taught at Ozen High School, was charged with misdemeanor assault, but was released from the Jefferson County Jail after hosting a $2,500 bond. It was unclear about what may have provoked Hastings, and a student at the high school Choosing to remain anonymous said typically Hastings was a target among students who curse and throw things at her. Hastings has been placed on administrative leave with pay until the investigation is over. Former Baylor football player Sean Oakman is under investigation for sexual assault. 
Waco police filed for a search warrant to search Oakman's apartment looking for an earring and clothing the victim left. Oakman denies the assault and claims all sex was consensual. Oakman is the third Baylor football player to be charged with sexual assault since 2014. Student body president and vice president Kevin Helgren and Bina Kim are in the process of choosing members of the Internal Reformation Committee, also known as the IRC. The creation of this committee became Helgren and Kim's first executive order after they were sworn in last Tuesday. Members of the committee will make recommendations to the Executive Alliance to enhance the organizational culture of student government. It will be comprised of seven students, four newcomers, and three veterans of student government. The names of the committee members will be announced tomorrow night. Many experts believe that 2016 may be the watershed year for virtual reality. UT has incorporated VR and 3D into its UT 3D programs to teach students about these new technologies. Our Gina Chung has more on the story. On the screen plane, if I get here, I should be coming slightly out of the screen. UT has held its UT 3D open house to celebrate the 50th anniversary of the Radio Television Film Department. The event featured a showcase of 3D films and demonstrations and introduce students to the UT 3D program funded by the Moody Foundation. It's the only comprehensive uh, 3D production program in the country. Uh, we began teaching VR this last fall also, which is a brand new thing that sort of continues our interest in immersive media. The curriculum allows students to produce 3D content and explore 3D innovations. I'd like to see our department move in a direction that uses virtual reality to enhance the human experience or to try and help people and, and find ways to use it both uh, in an educational sense and also in a way to advance any kind of sense of awareness or consciousness around certain issues. The technology showcased at the event allowed the students to experience virtual reality and see themselves in 3D, showing them the opportunities available through UT 3D. class is really interesting because it doesn't just go into technicalities. Um, I think it also talks about theory and why you would use virtual reality as opposed to just doing it to be, you know, flashy or trying to be edgy with the type of work that you're putting out. The program is open to all majors and students who complete the two required courses plus an internship or the immersive media course will earn a certificate. Students are encouraged to enroll in the courses if they have an interest in the future of 3D and virtual reality. Gina Chang, KVR News. Austin is known for its diverse food truck scene. But recent reports show 20% have failed health inspections. Reporter Marisabel Cardoso sheds light on the new regulation food trucks must now meet. One in five food trucks failed health inspections in the first two weeks of March. Can I have ACU noodle soup? And the reinspection process leads to a common problem little to no water supply key in keeping food and hands clean. We get out there, we're just like, okay, where's the water? Oh, I ran out. So I already had to suspend the permit. That happened to, so often to the point where we thought, you know what, let's, let's research. Research that resulted in a new rule. Trucks and trailers must have a 30-gallon minimum supply of water with a 15% larger waste water supply. We go in there, turn on the cold water, turn on the hot water, it looks good, great, thank you. Sign here, here's your decal. Done. Elizondo says customers can protect themselves by looking for the truck's purple decal. But some people skip out on checking if a place has this and instead go straight to the menu. You know, people make mistakes. A little cockroach never hurt anyone. However, health inspectors are not as lenient and food truck owners want to make sure they pass. I've gone through the checklist five times and I took it already. If there is something that comes up, I'll be bummed. With the new rule and a team of six inspectors, Elizondo hopes to prevent dire consequences in Austin. Get trained. Everybody's better for you. Everybody's safer for you. To report a health violation, customers can call 311, giving health inspectors 72 hours to investigate. Marissa Bel Cardozo, KVR News. Mopac has gotten LED lights along the side of the road. These lights are intended to make it easier for drivers to see at night. They are more energy efficient and last longer, saving money on their maintenance. The recently installed lights run from Highway 183 and RM2222, as well as Enfield Road. Starting this May, the monthly price of a Netflix subscription will be going up. 
Both old and new subscribers will be paying $9.99 per month instead of $7.99 per month. Netflix stated the rise in prices come from the increased value from original content, which they have been putting a lot of money into. Well, this weekend we saw a range of different temperatures. Saturday was kind of warm but humid, and yesterday we felt those temperatures drop in the early afternoon. Yeah, it was a bit random when those temperatures dropped, considering that last week was extremely warm. We saw a bit of rain for a while on Sunday, but then after that, the Texas weather was back at it again. Well, at least we had a nice little break from that heat. Our Alaya Ibrahim has our forecast for this week. You think we'll be seeing cooler temperatures this upcoming days, Alaya? We absolutely will be seeing some cooler temperatures this week. Not only that, but rain is also a possibility. Stay tuned to find out which days we'll have you grabbing an umbrella as you head out the door. Thank you. Have a news tip or story idea? Call the KBR News Tip Line 475 8181. Welcome back to KBR News. It looks like it's going to be quite rainy in Austin throughout the week, so be prepared for some showers in the next seven days. Today we saw a high of 89 and a low of 62, and the weather will remain fair for the rest of the day. Tomorrow will cool down a bit as we see a high of 76 and a low of 78. Low 58, if you're planning to go out Tuesday night, bring an umbrella because there's a 20% chance of thunderstorms. Wednesday, there will be a high of 73 and a low of 57, this time with a 50% chance of thunderstorms. On Thursday, the sun seems to come out again with a high of 79 and a low of 59. Friday will be mostly sunny with a high of 81 and a low of 65. Austin will also, being, will also be seeing a 20% chance of showers on Friday night. On Saturday, it looks like it'll be mostly cloudy with a high of 70 and a low of 66. Keep your raincoat handy on Saturday because there will be a 60% chance of precipitation. Sunday, we'll see a high of 77 and a low of 65 with a 70% chance of rain. We're in the middle of springtime, so the rain will be hanging around the Austin area for quite some time. Just remember to be prepared for some showers throughout the week and keep an umbrella handy to stay dry. Live in the Winter Center, KBR News. Thanks, Alaya. Well, since we're inspecting some rain this week, be sure to watch out for those slippery roads and a drive safe as you head to campus. College Press Box's Matthew Adams will be in the studio to talk Longhorn Sports after the break. Stay tuned. Why do the reader join sports? Now, KBR News at 9 Sports. Welcome back to KVR News. I'm College Press Box's Matthew Adams. Now at the 80th Masters this weekend, Jordan Spieth and ex-Longhorn look to be the first repeat champion, the fourth actually in the tournament's history. After leading through the first three days and the first nine holes, Spieth looked like he was in control. However, bogeys on hole 10 and 11 and two shots into the water cost him the lead and Danny Willett ultimately became the Masters champion. However, Spieth still has a good shot the rest of the season with the U.S. Open coming up here. All right, Matthew. Well, it looks like Jordan Spieth was a hot topic this weekend. Yeah, he was. And certainly for a guy trying to defend his title, having the last three years now finished in the top two he won in 2015, you know, the hopes at age 22 getting his second Masters title were certainly there. But um, just some mental mistakes there at the end cost him. And uh, Willa was able to get a lot of birdies and – uh, ultimately take the lead. He ended up with a five-shot lead, um, and Spieth was, you know, unfortunately fell within three shots short of him. So, tough weekend for him, but a young golfer at age 22, he's still got a long ways to go in his career. Well, good for him. Hopefully, he'll keep up the good work. Thank you, Matthew. And now, our Marisabel Cardoso has your entertainment news. Marisabel, what celebrity buzz is happening? Find out who were some of the big winners at the MTV Movie Awards, say hello to a Princess Diaries baby, and another member of Stars Hollow returns. I'll have all of this after the break. Stay tuned.
watching KBR News at 9. Your campus, your news. The 2016 MTV Movie Awards aired Sunday night with host Kevin Hart and Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Will Smith took home the biggest honor of the night, the Lifetime Achievement Award, after a musical throwback intro by The Lonely Island. Other performers included Halsey, Ariana Grande, and Salt and Peppa. For the full list of, of winners, go over to the MTV Movie Awards website. And ladies and gentlemen, keep calm because Melissa McCarthy, or the beloved Suki St. James, has announced she will be returning to the Netflix Gilmore Girls revival. Fans were pretty worried when McCarthy was not present for the Gilmore Girls reunion. And the panel did not even mention McCarthy's recent success in her career. When she announced that she indeed would be a part of the show, it was revealed that her very busy schedule had been a conflict in deciding whether she would be in it or not. Melissa McCarthy says she is very excited to go back to Stars Hollow, and of course she will be bringing back Suki's cute and hilarious personality. And Anne Hathaway and husband Adam Shulman are enjoying parenthood with their new baby boy, Jonathan Rosebank Shulman. Hathaway gave birth to baby Shulman on March 24th, and the family has been in their L.A. home spending quality time with the baby ever since. Hathaway and Shulman have been married for four years, and they are enthusiastic about the new addition to the family. Hathaway is taking it easy a little bit and has plans to visit New York with the baby when he is able to travel. That's all for your news and entertainment. Be sure to follow us on Twitter for updates at KVR News ENT. Thanks, Marie Isabel, and thank you for joining us tonight. I'm Chelsea Moreno. For news and weather updates throughout the week, you can follow us on Twitter at KVR News. And I'm Sierra Juarez. Stay tuned for College Press Box up next on Texas Student Television. Have a great night.